Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of 3 Down Development. Today we're going to take a look at two different types of screens you can use to add as a bit of an extension to your run game. It's a great way to get, if you have a receiver that's one of your best players, great way to get them the ball, some guaranteed touches, whether that's early in the game or to start a drive, uh, or when you know when you haven't been able to get the ball in their hands, maybe the weather's not great, um, or your quarterback's just struggling that day. It's a great way to have simple throws that get the ball to the perimeter. Um, and it's especially if you have an undersized, more athletic offensive. Uh, it's a great way to let them use that athleticism in a more high-efficiency way um, to pick up some chunk chunk plays and, and move the ball, as you would, would try to in your run game, um, but through the pass game. So we're going to start by taking a look at a couple clips from Oregon from last year. Uh, it's a great way if you're facing a really good D-line to make those defensive lines run uh, and tire them out early. You know, Auburn had two guys that were picked, I think, in the first two rounds. Uh, one guy in the top ten on their defensive front. Um, so Oregon used a ton of screens in this game that we looked at. Uh, and the first one is kind of your basic hitch screen. Uh, there's going to be a subtle run action here. Okay, I like it with a little more play action to really get the, the linebackers to bite downhill. Okay, and then we're going to throw the ball out to the perimeter. Wide receiver is going to block the most dangerous man. Uh, and then the O-line's getting out, and it's really key. You see this first block by the tackle. They do it off kind of like almost like it's an RPO look. Um, they're showing like an RPO fanning those three or that guard and tackle out. Um at Laurier, we like to do it with down blocks and, and influence that end to shuffle uh, and get the tackle out. But that tackle needs to be really flat. So we always teach him, you want to run to the face of that returner because you know that's where this defender is going to go. And then as the re or sorry, that receiver, the receiver is going to work upfield for three hard steps and then back. And we want to catch this ball behind the line of scrimmage. So it's a forward pass. If it's dropped or, or, or poorly thrown, it's incomplete. But uh, we're able to block downfield before the ball is caught because it's thrown by the line of scrimmage. So you'll see here, 58 does a pretty good job of coming out flat. I'd even want him to come more flat. All right. And he picks off. That would often be like the boundary halfback uh, for us in Canada. Okay. And the guard doesn't get out really clean here. He's got a three-tech. That's part of the reason why I'd like for him to step down. You see that the guard gets kind of tied up uh, with his guy. So the way we would usually do it is we would show inside zone of the field. We'd make this look like a zone read, step down, step down. The guys on the front side are just protecting inside zone. Okay, I like what they do with their tight end here in that they release him inside and they try and go pick up the safety. So you see here he's trying to now cut off the safety and so hopefully we get this guy blocked, all right, and the ball is able to work back up that hash mark. Okay, which it, which it does for a very positive play for them there. Okay, here's another example where they're going to run it to the field. Um, you know, here they end up in a trip set trying to create numbers. They run it the exact same up front. Um, the tackle is going to set and then get out flat. Again, you really see the importance from this angle of if that tackle bends up field, he's going to have to bend back to try and make the block. We really want him hard and flat. And now that here it's the, the Y receiver, he's able to come back underneath and take that. So typically your tackle is looking to work for whoever that alley force player is. And if this was in the Canadian field, this would probably be like the Sam linebacker uh, in a three receiver set. The guard, here they have the guard almost on a rat kill on the defensive end, uh, which is interesting. We would like to have that guard step down, get out, and now he's looking for that inside linebacker. So ideally he picked the mic and he would be able to kick the Sam. Again, we're just going most dangerous here. And you see the little fake to the back. And they're able to pick up 10-yard play and first down. The other thing, like I said, I love about these is, you know, if you're playing with an undersized offensive line uh, and you're dealing with, you know, some big-time defensive linemen, make them run, right? Make them turn, flip their hips. They want to pass rush, right? Make them turn and run. Have them use that energy 
you know, running out to the perimeter instead of being a handful in the run game. So this is the third type of screen we're going to look at. It's similar to the last one, but the action that draws your eyes away from the screen is different. So this is what most people call a tunnel screen. Um, there's no run fake action. Okay, they actually show like a, like a swing screen to the boundary. Okay, um, trying to draw the eyes of the second level players and the, and the linebackers into the boundary. Again, get the D line up field and you're trying to create that tunnel. So here, they're, they're getting the guard and center out first. The tackle seems to be locked on that end. It's a little longer developing play. So having the tackle locked on that end is great for protection. So we see the guard now is the kickout man. He's going to come flat. He does a really nice job. The center is the pull through. And because the mic bought the fake, he's really trying to get to the safety. You know, and I think they're in a first and 15 here and they, and they pick it up. It's a really nice job by the guard moving in space. So the guard's able to get out there flat. And, you know, he doesn't really make a, the block on the guy, but he forced him to go around. Again, you see how that belly back, we don't want that. We want him to be as flat as possible. And that receiver's got to set him up by going upfield and coming back so he can get up and underneath that. Okay, but again, you're able to pick up a 15-yard chunk play there. So we have a, I have a couple OUA clips here uh, from last season. We had a ton of success at Laurier with this play in 2018. It wasn't as big a part of our repertoire last year. We had a lot of injuries at receiver. Uh, and it's one of those plays where you do need a decent amount of practice repping it. Only because it's such a uh, timing-related play. So if you're going to have this, you know, in your skill set, in, in what you run, you know, I would highly recommend, you know, this being something you're, you're kind of trying to put in day one. So here we go 23. We actually put a tight end out here at the wideout spot. Uh, and the reason why we did that is to use him in the blocking game. So we're going to skate him down here. And he's actually going to block the inside linebacker to the call side. Our slot here is going to take most dangerous man. So he's now going to peel off on the low defender. Okay, and our tackle. Now he comes flat and there's no threat. He's able to bend up the field. You know, we have a pretty good chance to make a good play here. You know, we unfortunately come up a little short on uh, on the block here from the receiver. Uh, and it's a nice play by, by the defensive back to get to the screen. But you see how it's kind of setting up. Really, this is kind of like your old school sweep play in our offense. Right, so we're gonna sell the inside zone the other way, which is a, a day one play for us. We're on inside zone out of one back. Okay, and then we're gonna try and seal that linebacker who hopefully, you know, is stepping down and then trying to escape. The end is gonna play shuffle, or if he plays chase, even better. Uh, and then we're gonna try and get one of those two defensive backs blocked and get our other two linemen out to lead for that screen. From the tight angle, again, you can kind of see the escape from the O-line, right? We're selling the inside zone, which really hopefully gets this mic to anchor, keeps the free in the middle of the field, right? And then we're going to get the ball out on the perimeter, okay, and get bodies out on the perimeter. You might look at it and go, okay, it's a seven-yard play, um, but ultimately this is an extension of our run game, right? So if we had run inside zone there for seven yards, we would have been pretty happy with that. That's how we view, you know, this type of screen. So you see the action, the end bends and chases. He's now, there's no way he's ever going to get back in that play. Okay. And this is kind of, you know, you see here the center trying to work him front side. You know, ideally we had this schemed up this week to try and crack him and we could get out flat. And then this guy was hopefully going to be peeling up for the safety, right? He kind of gets stuck on that will. But again, as an extension of the run game, it's a really effective play. Here's a look at how we ran our tunnel screen. We ran a lot of 31 pass game to the boundary where we would empty out the running backs and get to 33. Um, and ultimately here we use that same motion and then use the backs to lead block for that tunnel screen. So again here there's no run fake. Obviously it's an empty backfield. Um, but we are kind of selling you know, the pass and you know then we're going to block downfield uh, and, you know, hopefully get our O-line out 
uh, and in front of some DBs and linebackers, and they do a fantastic job here. Um, you see both the backs come out. You'll see the center actually gets out here first. Okay, and he works up that hash mark. And ultimately, you know, we're able to use that and the blocks by the running backs to get this thing vertical. And, you know, this is a huge play in the situation for us. Ends up being about a 30-yard play. So here with the single receiver set, we're going to use the fullback as that first blocker to take the corner. And then our running back really should take the, the player over the fullback. But he winds up kind of running at the will. And then our, our center gets out first. And he kind of influences that linebacker. Now, he eventually makes the play, but again, it's after a 30-yard play. So it's a great way to get your guys into space. Uh, it's a great way to use athletic offensive linemen. And in, in general, when you're trying to run the football, you know, there's lots of ways to run the ball. But often on a high school team, you know, one of your best athletes may play receiver. Um, you know, you may struggle to get the ball to the perimeter. Uh, or you may even do well in the perimeter, but you struggle to run the ball inside because you have undersized alignment or you've had injuries at that spot. And it's a great way to kind of get, find a way to get consistent plays that kind of mimic a ground game um, with high percentage throws uh, that keep you ahead of the stick. So I think two things that coaches can definitely look to use uh, to help keep the sticks moving and stay ahead of the game on offense.